Hello, and welcome to today's daily study. Um, we're going to be doing the Saturday of the Passion Week. And this is a day that Christ is in the tomb on earth. And yet we learn from Peter, that, or from 1 Peter, that during this time, Christ was teaching to those who were in the spirit world, that he ministered to them. And we also learn some really good things from some modern prophets about exactly what was going on during that time. So let's get going here. Uh, ministry in the spirit world. So they went and made the sepulcher sur sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. It's hard to imagine the anguish Jesus Christ followers must have felt on the day after his death. The night before, his body had been lovingly prepared and placed in a garden tomb. Now, they were left to figure out how life could possibly go on without him. Almost certainly, his death had taken something from them, but what they had lost was nothing compared to all that his life had given. Whether they understood it or not, Jesus Christ had forged a new path forward for all who would follow him, one lit by hope. Uh, by a hope that shines brighter than any darkness we may encounter. President M. Russell Ballard invited us to study the remarkable vision of President Joseph F. Smith about the Savior's ministry in the spirit world that took place after the Savior's crucifixion. I invite you to thoroughly and thoughtfully read this revelation, which is section 138 of the Doctrine and Covenants. As you do so, may the Lord bless you more fully and uh, may the Lord bless you to more fully understand and appreciate God's love and his plan of salvation and happiness for his children. I testify that the vision President Joseph F. Smith received is true. I bear witness that every person can read it and come to know it is true. And I, um, of course, I, I go in with M. Russell Ballard here and the fact that I know that this vision is true as well, and that you as well can know of its truthfulness by reading it and by praying and asking your Heavenly Father if that's true. He knows all things, and He's not going to lead you astray. He can let you know of the truthfulness of the things that we're about to cover here. So here, the Matthew uh, 27, 55 through 61, we covered that yesterday. Um, in which Joseph of Arimathea brought him uh, to his tomb that he had bought for himself. He brought Jesus there so that he could rest there on the Sabbath day. And then uh, they could come back after the Sabbath to kind of finish his, his burial preparations. Um, but we read that yesterday, so I'm going to continue. Uh, this is a teaching of Christ before he entered into the Garden of Gethsemane, so during the time of the Passover, and he's instructing them on things to expect and to wait for. It says, If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And this is the Holy Ghost, and really the role of the Holy Ghost. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In other words, be prepared. So, once again, this is Christ before uh, the resurrection. So Christ is preparing them specifically for the time in which he's going to be separated for them. Not just for the time of his death, but also the time of his resurrection when he would ascend into heaven. And then we get into Doctrine and Covenants 138. And this is a question that will help as we, we study this. When has Jesus helped you find hope, comfort, or peace during difficult time? Uh, during difficult times. And so we go into Doctrine and Covenants section 138. A vision given to President Joseph F. Smith in Salt Lake City, Utah on October 3rd, 1918. And it wasn't until 1981, I believe, 
that it was actually added in as a section to the Doctrine and Covenants. So it took a while from the time in which this vision was given to the time in which it was uh, accepted into the scriptures as scripture. But even so, that never changed how valid it was. Um, it's just procedural things, you know. Uh, anyway, so this kind of like these breaking this breaking down that happens at the beginning of every section is a really good place to start your journey through this this vision. So President Joseph F. Smith ponders upon the writings of Peter and our Lord's visit to the spirit world. President Smith sees the righteous dead assembled in paradise and Christ's ministry among them. He sees how the preaching of the gospel was organized. He sees Adam, Eve, and many of the holy prophets in the spirit world who considered their spirit state before their resurrection as bondage. The righteous dead of this day continue their labor in the world of spirits. And each of these has a lot of implications for us. But as you know, we're only doing about 15 minutes here. If you really want to study these implications, then read this, this uh, section of Doctrine and Covenants. Look for books that talk about this and really enlighten your mind in this. And it's, it's an amazing uh, bit of knowledge that the Lord has given through uh, President Joseph F. Smith. And so basically it's saying that he was reflecting on the atoning sacrifice of the Savior and uh, he says, while I was thus engaged, my mind reverted to the writings of the Apostle Peter, to the primitive saints scattered abroad throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, and other parts of Asia, where the gospel had been preached after the crucifixion of the Lord. I opened the Bible and read in third and fourth chapters of the first epistle of Peter, and as I read, I was greatly impressed more than I had ever been before in the following passage. And this is a quote from First Peter chapter 3. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when the once long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. And here it's First Peter 18 through 20. And so he begins to uh, think on these things. And it says here, I pondered over these things which are written and the eyes of my understanding were open. In other words, the Lord showed him these things. And I think that this is important for us to realize that many visions and, and teachings of the prophets come from sincere questions, come from sincere inquiries and ponderings over the scriptures. Word of wisdom was given to Joseph Smith after his wife sat there and questioned him about, you know, is this right for uh, people to be spent on the floor and all this inside a holy edifice? And we learned about the importance of keeping our bodies clean and, and stuff from, from drugs and addictions. Anyway, um, but we continue here. Uh, and they were gathered together in one place. As in, uh, uh, I saw the host of the dead, both small and great. So in other words, those that we know and those that we don't know. Uh, and they were gathered together in one place, an innumerable company of spirits of the just, who had been faithful in the testimony of Jesus while they lived in mortality. And this is what we call paradise. This is the place where people went to uh, kind of await their resurrection. It's a, a place of peace and serenity. And uh, there's another area of the spirit world called spirit prison. It's not a real prison. It's just where people who were evil or had evil thoughts or maybe didn't completely understand the teachings of Christ or whatnot, that's where they more or less congregated. And it's separate from this area of paradise. It says, All of these had departed their mortal life, firm in the hope of a glorious resurrection through the grace of God the Father and his only begotten 
son, Jesus Christ. And he talks about how Jesus Christ appeared to these people who were righteous, who were worthy of celestial glory. It says, and there he preached to them the everlasting gospel, the doctrine of resurrection and the redemption of mankind from the fall and from individual sins on conditions of repentance. But unto the wicked he did not go. So Jesus Christ didn't go into uh, spirit prison. Uh, and among the ungodly and the unrepentant who had defiled themselves while in the flesh, his voice was not raised. Neither did the rebellious who rejected the testimonies and the warnings of the ancient prophets behold his presence nor look upon his face. So we get from this that there is a separate area, that there are two very distinct areas, those for those who haven't received the word, those who were unrepentant, those who were not prepared at that time to see Christ, and those that were. We also here talk about how Jesus then organized these people from this area where they were righteous and they had lived righteous lives. He organized them to go and teach to these people, showing us that no matter what happens in life, Heavenly Father has a plan in which everyone will be given an opportunity to hear the gospel, to hear of the covenants and the, the teachings of Christ, and accept them before the time of judgment. They will all have that ability. Um, because there are lots of people who died without knowing the teachings of Christ. And it's not fair for them to be judged not knowing the teachings of Christ while we get judged having had the opportunity. God is a God of justice, and that would be completely unjust to hold people accountable for things that they didn't know. Anyway, and so Christ went and organized this. And he said, uh, and as I wondered, my eyes were open and my understanding quickened, and I perceived the Lord went not in person among the wicked and the disobedient who had rejected the truth to teach him. But behold, from among the righteous, he organized his forces and then appointed messengers clothed with power and authority and commissioned them to go forth to carry the light of the gospel to them that were in darkness, even to all the spirits of men. And thus was the gospel preached to the dead." And there we get kind of the fulfilling of Peter's uh, explanation of Christ going and preaching among the dead, uh, who were there since Heavenly Father was waiting at the time of Noah, you know. Uh, and we also get kind of an idea of who was sent among the great and mighty ones who were assembled in this vast congregation of the righteous, were Father Adam, the Ancient of Days and all, our glorious Mother Eve, with all of her faithful daughters who lived through the ages and worshipped the true and living God. Abel, the first martyr, was there, and his brother Seth, who was in the express image of his father Adam. We see a lot of people who were all there, and they were organized and sent to teach among those who didn't have the opportunity or were not as righteous in living the gospel during life. And this is one of the things that I said. Christ and his teachings, not everyone was meant to understand it on earth because they would be held accountable for things in which they weren't prepared to hear or to follow. Here in spirit prison, those who didn't have that opportunity or were maybe less righteous had the ability at that time to then go and and learn the teachings of Christ. And so, uh, the dead who repent will be redeemed through obedience to the ordinances in the house of God, after they have paid the penalty of their transgressions and are washed clean, shall receive a reward according to their works, for they are heirs of salvation. Thus the vision of the redemption of the dead was revealed to me, and I bear record, and I know this record is true. And so I thank you very much for listening to me today, and I hope to talk to you all tomorrow during the Line Upon Line, in which we'll go over the next week's uh, lesson plan and start over again. Thank you very much. You have a great rest of your day.